Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Today is another informal video where I'm going to take you through my Puchner bassoon. Now, some people call it Puchner, some people call it Puchner. Just don't ever call it Puchner. Um, that's, that's not a good look. I mean, unless you got a Snapchat filter. You know the one I'm talking about, the one with the rainbows. Okay. In this box, my bassoon is returning to me, and you guys have been asking about other bassoons that I have in my collection, so I figured I would go ahead and take you through. It has recently returned from um, being overhauled. Chad Taylor had it for, shoot, I think I was expedited in his um, to-do list, because I was, this is the bassoon that I try all of the raft reads that I make on. So um, when I sent it to him saying, hey, um, I am missing way too many felts and way too many corks and I need to have it looked at and um, quickly repaired. He bumped me to the top of the list. So thanks Chad. Um, this bassoon I purchased while I was a student at Indiana University. It is a Kushner 23 model or sometimes it's also referred to as a model 5000. This is the bassoon that I have played on most of the recordings that you will hear if you listen to anything on my website. Okay, now we are unpacking it and this is where I usually say a small little prayer that, um, that nothing happened when UPS had a hold of it. So knock on wood that it's all okay. I did go ahead and ship it in the original case that I purchased it in. I did this because even though when I am doing gigs with it, I usually use a Marcus Bona case, the actual case that it came in is custom fit to it and it is much more sturdy than a Marcus Bona case. So I want to make sure that it was good for shipping. When I sent it away, I also sent it away with all of the vocals. So those should be in the, the outside pocket. I keep my uh, vocals in a BG France case. It is zipper around it and then on the inside it's like a little library and it is velvet. The vocals that I use with this instrument are largely going to be the straight bend or British bend. I have four vocals that I have matched to this instrument. I have two ED1s one ED2, and then a heckle vocal. The heckle vocal, when I sent it, needed to be recorked. So <laughs> I'm looking for the one that had to be recorked. Here it is, it is a heckle CD2, and it has a brand new cork that's placed on it so that it should be good to go. Okay, so uh, those are the vocals that I have matched with it. Let's go ahead and dig into the instrument. I have a um, antique finish on mine. The antique finish on the bassoon is going to give more vibrance and it's also more responsive. So this bassoon is a powerhouse. I am not gonna lie. Okay, so if we look inside, let me see if I can angle you downwards so that you can see the bassoon and then I will talk you through it. Okay guys, this is my Puchner bassoon, ready to be unwrapped. The serial number is 12674. The boot joint, we'll go ahead and start there. Of course, I have the rollers here for the right hand pinky. On the back side, I do have the A flat, B flat trill, which is a nice accessory for pieces like the Poulenc Trio, for those of you guys who have played it. Um, I also have extra rollers to speed up the technique, so that's super helpful. The right hand, I have an added whisper key lock so that with the right hand thumb, I can go ahead and press the mechanism upwards, and when I press the mechanism upwards, I lock on the wing joint so the whisper key stays down and my low notes have no problem speaking. All of the screws are nylon fitted, so the amount of work Chad was telling me it took to overhaul it was minimal. The one thing I do have to say is that these screws do have a tendency, if I'm not careful, to slide out. So I'm always making sure that I am not loosening any screws. I have caught several of them just before they were on edge of being halfway out. And anytime you're losing a screw that's not uh, all the way in 
or uh, felt is gone or cork is missing, there is the possibility of a pad height being off and then that can directly alter the intonation. So I do keep an eye on that as um, when I am playing a lot that can happen. Okay, so there's the boot joint. Oh, also, oh my gosh, I just lost my boot cap. <laughs> Must have gotten loose in shipping. The joints, both where the wing joint fits in and also the long joint fit in, both sides of these are lined. Uh, this is not the case on some other bassoons, but because this is a high-end model, um, the Model 23, the Model 5000, whatever name you want to call it, this does have both sides lined, so there is not a chance of rot, which is fantastic for me. Let's go ahead and dig into the wing joint next. We'll go ahead and unwrap him. The wing joint has really nice accessories. Of course, it does have the whisper key. Here it also has an additional whisper key thumb lock, so I can do it either with the right hand thumb or with the left hand thumb, guaranteeing those low notes. I have, of course, the whisper key, the C sharp, the A, the B, C, and the D key. For the front, of course, I do have my high note keys and I have the additional E flat trill key. I can't say that I use this a ton, but this is standard on the bassoon, this model, so um, it did come with an extra key. On the long joint, I do have the addition of a roller on the C to D keys. Again, this is standard, but it does help speed up some low note technique, which is also quite fun. The bell, the bell is standard, nothing too exciting here. Of course, because it was made in 1998, I don't have to worry about having an ivory bell. The Puchner is the name on the bell. It originally came with gold, but since then it has turned to a darker, um, style of almost looking like it is gray. And uh, I do have to say that I probably should polish this. I know that Chad was mainly concerned about pad height and intonation for me. Uh, that's what I requested to have done uh, because largely I'm not overly concerned about how pretty the bassoon is. I am more concerned with how it plays. All of the key work is silver plated. And I do have to say, let's go back to the wing joint. The wing joint, as well as all of the other joints, you can see that the finger tone holes are silver lined, and them being silver lines, they do protrude into the bore. So again, the capability of getting any rot is next to none, and that is the safety reason in large part why I have this instrument and I use it so often as a backup instrument. Also for solo bassoon playing with piano, fantastic, because it has such a great level of vibrancy and projection. Uh, jazz bassoon, also fantastic. It can do it all. It really is a fantastic instrument to have as a backup when you know you want to make sure that you're always covered for you know those imperative gigs. Okay guys, this wraps up my Puchner bassoon. I hope you enjoyed this little journey in through the instrument that I've got here. If you have any questions or comments about it, I would love to hear from you. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. If you're not already, you might consider subscribing so that you never miss a future video. And if you want to keep up on all of my media adventures, there is always Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can see me on all of those on a daily basis. I will see you guys next time. Bye! I saw that one coming a mile away. Coco, come on! <laughs>